Hi everyone, welcome back to Joe Man's Land. I hope you're having an amazing day. Hello from sunny California. Today I'm going on a winery tour and I thought it would be the perfect setting for me to get into a fun topic in the brand of Nikon. Today we're going to be going into a sort of divisive topic, which is why does Nikon need the Z6 III? In my humblest of opinions, I think the Z6 III might be one of the most important cameras to not draw by Nikon to date. All right, we made it to vineyard number one, so that's a good spot to get into reason number one why the Z6 III needs to come out for Nikon. The first reason, which I think is probably the most obvious, is the gap in their current camera lineup. As of right now, there is not a single prosumer camera in the Nikon ecosystem. And yes, people might say, well, I love my ZFC, which is just a rehouse Z30 and Z50. And others might say that the ZF is going to be that camera. I am here to say without a doubt that it is not. And that currently Nikon does not have a single camera that is gauged towards prosumer. In the past, the Z6, the Z6 II were those cameras, but they have not made an update in that system in a very long time. Ah oh man, well, I'm sure you can tell it is not the same day that I recorded that initial video, but uh, I just thought we would recap here. Um, I found when I was doing around doing the wine tasting, I just really wanted to focus on enjoying it. So instead, we'll just do spark notes and we'll talk about why the Z6 III needs to come out and what it really addresses in terms of Nikon's place in the camera market. There's a lot of hybrid creators that would, I would say, identify as prosumer users of cameras. I myself am a great example of that. Yes, in my spare time, I do a lot of photography for fun, but I'm a full-time marketer. And while my camera is a part of my daily work, it's not everything. And it's actually quite a small part of what I do. So when I look at buying a new camera, there are a couple things I have to first of all think about. Number one, am I getting any client complaints? If clients aren't liking what I'm shooting, that immediately tells me, man, I need to buy a new camera now because it's going to impact the type of business I do. And as of right now, that's not the case. My Z6 looks awesome. The colors are great. My lenses work really well with it. They're all old F-mount lenses. And that paired with my Mini 3 Pro drone and my Sony ZV-1 give me results that no one questions. But I'm not shooting sports, I'm not shooting wildlife, and for the most part I'm in environments, at least with my Z6, where I can shoot manual with focus peaking and get everything I need. The autofocus on the Z6 works, it's fine, but you do need to learn it and accept some of its limitations. Not all professionals will be willing to do that, but as of now, my Z6 addresses everything I need. So that's already reason one why I wouldn't buy a new camera right away. But let's say theoretically, I was thinking about replacing it. I'm thinking about a camera that's not just gonna be good for today. I'm thinking about a camera that's gonna be good four or five years from now and still stack up. Currently, we're still seeing the rollout of 4K TVs everywhere and still even a lot of streaming services only offer their content in 1080 and if you want 4K, you have to pay extra. 4K is not the new 1080 yet, but we are getting there. So when I think about a prosumer camera to replace my Z6, it's gotta do more than 4K. I don't think it has to do 8K right away, but it has to at least offer 6K. And in terms of frame rates, it's gotta do 4K 120 as the new 1080 120. I love to slow my footage down and I use the 1080 120 on my Z6 all the time and it looks great, right? It's oversampled 6K all the way down to 1080 120. It's very clean, but long-term, I'm probably not gonna be, be able to use it as much for client stuff because everyone wants their stuff in 4K. And I mean, yes, you can shoot 1080, upscale it on a 4k timeline and not a lot of people will be able to tell a difference but i don't like to lie to my clients if someone asks for something in 4k i want to be able to offer it to them and in the future 6k and the other benefits of well of having a 6 or 8k camera it means you can shoot in those resolutions and edit on a 4k timeline and be able to blow things up a little bit this can be great for reframing shots and also using third-party stabilization on the video footage after shooting the other thing as well that i do find quite limiting about my z6 is no 10-bit internal video recording. So many competitors have prosumer cameras currently that offer that, and Nikon's a little bit late to the party. Yes, of course, Z9 and Z8 offer 10-bit internal codecs and are great bang for the buck, but they're outside the price range of uh, average prosumer. And that's the next thing we have to think about. How much should we actually be spending on a camera if we are not a full-time professional photographer or videographer? What I like to think about is number one, will my employer subsidize the cost? 
And two, if not, and I'm looking at using it more for subcontracting work on the side, how much income I can be bringing in on a monthly basis with this camera. For myself as a young professional that does use my camera for my work, my camera becomes an extension of that and is a business expense. So can I validate spending $5,000 on a camera? Eh, probably not. So that's really what the Z6 III will be addressing. It'll be coming to the prosumers like myself that really need that reasonably priced camera that can be future-proof and deliver value not just now, but five years into the future. So Nikon, that is my challenge to you. You've got the ZF coming out and obviously you've got the awesome XP7 on it, but put out a camera for the prosumer. It's been years since the Z6 II came out and while it was great back then, no one's buying Z6 IIs now that are in the prosumer game. Even my Z6, I bought it used it was great value, but would I recommend buying a Z6 now to someone wanting to get a prosumer camera for, for the clients? Probably not. So I would love to see Nikon come out with this camera in 2023. I doubt it's gonna happen because we had the Z8 and the ZF drop this year, but do I think Nikon could potentially be dropping the Z6 and Z7 III cameras simultaneously like they did in the past? For sure, and if they do, I think it's going to be in April. But I don't have any proof to back this up. I am just speculating here, and my guess is as good as yours, the viewer. So I think with that one, we will wrap things up. In the comments below, I would love to hear why you think Nikon should be coming out with the Z6 III or why you think they're too late to the party. Or perhaps you think the Z8 is that prosumer camera. Either way, comment below. I'd love to get your thoughts. But I don't think all is lost. This year marked the first time since the Z9 dropped that we saw the X Speed 7 move down into lower tier bodies. And for those of us who aren't looking to spend four or $5,000 on a camera, this is something that's hopeful. And I'm not gonna be dropping off the Nikon ship anytime soon. Like I said, my Z6 does everything I need it to, so why would I switch? But if tomorrow my clients started complaining about my Z6 not delivering, I would have to look outside of Nikon, which is really disappointing. I love how Nikon cameras feel, how they look, the results they give, the colors, they're awesome. And after picking up a Z8 and Z9 at the store level and seeing how the autofocus works, there's no issues there either. Hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and remember to take beautiful photos every single day. Don't do it for the views, do it for yourself. And I look forward to seeing you all in the next one. See you later. Whew.